Welcome to Axiom Portal Software. In this video, we're going to call it Getting Started. I'm going to show you how to get started building a project in Axiom Portal Software. There's three basic areas we're going to be using. Uh, we're going to be using the library browser. Within the library browser, we'll find our IR commands, our RS-232 commands, and some network commands that we will build using in our project. When you open up, you have a public library, but there's also a user's library. This user's library, yours is going to be empty unless you actually go in and build that library. Um, the way you build that library, of course, is to learn IR codes and RS-232 codes into your system that is covered in another video. Okay, we'll also be using the project view. The project view is where you're actually going to build your project. Uh, you start by, whenever you open it, it's going to give you one location. As you add locations, the zones actually build on here as well. You can go in and rename these if you need to, to name this a different room if you wanted to. We're going to go ahead and name this one family. If you want to add that, you notice that the zones automatically stack for you. Now, if you have areas where they're not particularly in a zone, but you have equipment that you're going to use throughout the house, you may want to use this zone that we have called Equipment Rack. Sorry, that's the wrong one. I want to use the zone we have called Equipment Rack. In Equipment Rack, this is where you put equipment that's not necessarily going to be in any particular zone, but is shared throughout the house. Or if you have a theater that you're going to have equipment in, you want to go ahead and use Equipment Rack. Since we're going to have a whole house audio system with the 800, we're going to use Equipment Rack. So what we're going to do is go ahead here. Here is where you add your Axiom devices. We're going to go ahead and add an AX800 to our system at this point. Once you have the AX800 in your system, you need to go ahead and click on it. And once you click on it, it appears in this window over here. This is our design page. This is where we actually work on our equipment. We're going to work on our keypads here as well as our 800. First, we're going to go ahead and look inside of our 800 and see things that we would need to do for our system. One of the most important things that you want to have is a network connection. You want to connect a mini USB from the side of your computer to the back of your AX800. And this is where you're going to go ahead and give it a time zone. From here, you go ahead and choose the place you are in the world. We're in North America here. I'm going to go ahead and leave this checked. This is always checked. This synchronizes the time on your computer uh, with the internet. This is where you actually put in your network information. If your system is DHCP, you can go ahead and just connect, click this button here that says Show Current Address. Now, if you're happy with that and you want that to be a static IP, you can just go ahead and click that. Now, it becomes a static IP. We do suggest that you do put a static IP in Axiom Equipment. If you want to change this, of course, you could go ahead and you can make any changes to that IP address that you have to. You just make sure you don't have any conflicts uh, with your IP address. Uh, in your system. Okay, from here, we're going to go back over to the a AX800 here, and right here is our IR ports. These are the eight IR ports that are on the back of your unit. This is where you add your IR devices. In our system, we're going to go ahead and add some devices to our system. The way you do that is simply drag them to there. Okay, we're going to go to Carver here because we're going to have a CD player. I'm going to grab the entire CD player and simply drag it to IR1. Keep it in mind that you can have multiple devices on one IR output. You can even go to an IR block and add multiple devices. You don't have to just have the eight IR outputs here. You can add multiple devices. Of course, you want to be careful that they are different devices and don't have the same IR codes. We're going to grab a tuner, and we're going to go ahead and drop that on IR2 here. Okay, and we're also in our system, we're going to add a DirecTV box. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a DirecTV box, drop that in there. I'm going to control that with my R. And the last thing I'm going to add to that, I'm going to add a cable box. DirecTV and cable, yes, I love TV. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that in there. And just for the exercise here, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a Blu ray player as well. And we're going to grab a Blu ray player, let that open. We have a Blu-ray pair, we're going to drop that on the IR input. The next thing we're going to do, now that we know what our equipment's going to be, we're going to let the AX800 know that. And the way we do that is this. 
This right here are the inputs on the back of your AX800. You have uh, source 1 through 8. We're going to label those sources. So here we're going to go down to source labels. And here we're going to go ahead and put the labels or names of these devices into our system. Uh, we're going to add cable. And the last thing we're going to add is a Blu-ray player. Now here's one important thing. I'm not going to put Blu-ray player on this line 5. I'm going to put Blu-ray player on Source 7. And there's a reason for that. The reason being is Source 7 is a digital input. Most Blu-ray players today, they no longer have uh, RCA outs. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put that on Source 7 because Source 7 is a digital input. Now I've labeled all of my sources and now my AX800 know what those sources are. What I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to go ahead and upload this. I'm going to upload this to my AX800. The way you do that, the mini USB in the back of our system is plugged into the side of my computer. I'm going to highlight this. Anytime you have something that's bold, right, that, that means it needs to be updated. If it's dark and bold, it needs to be updated. So what I do, I click on that, and I click on this upload button here. What happens now? It uploads these devices to my system. So now it knows that I have these devices within my system. From here, um, I decide uh, what I'm going to actually control my system with. In this case, we're going to go ahead and set up a KPC and KPD keypad. The way you do that, once again, go to the Axiom dropdown. We're going to go ahead and add a KPC keypad to our system. It's telling me that I would need an Ethernet connection or have it con connected to a control device, meaning that I'm going to plug this keypad into the back of the AX800. I'm going to do the same thing with a KPD keypad here. Okay, when these keypads open, this is how they're going to look. I'm going to go ahead and open that KPC keypad here. Now, when you do that, you want to go ahead and lock things down. What these are, these are pins, because what happens is if I don't pin that down and I go to the next device, that device disappears. So since I want to work on that device, I'm going to go ahead and click on that device and pin it down into the program here. Okay, I still have my amplifier pinned down into the program along with my keypad. Why do I have them both pinned down? Because right now I want to actually see what my sources are going to be. In case I don't remember, this here is how the KPC keypad opens. And right here, this is our home page. What we want to do at this point is pick a background. So what we're going to do is go ahead to our gallery here. Now, you have choices in your gallery. Okay. The choices are going to be this. I can go ahead and add some wallpaper to the back of this keypad here. And this is what the background of my keypad is going to look like. I go ahead and choose a background here by double clicking. This is what all my pages would look like unless I changed it. And from here, I would actually go ahead and build a project by finding the type of buttons that I would want to use. In this case, we're going to go ahead and use, uh, I don't know, golden. So from golden, what I would do at this point, I could go ahead and add buttons to my system. And these buttons here can actually be my sources. If I have page flips, they can be my page flips, they can be my source selects. But in this case, we're just going to go ahead and make them source selections. Okay, and you can go ahead and line up. And of course, there are alignment tools up here that you can actually use to line these buttons up. Or you can highlight them all and move them all at one time. Okay, I can go ahead and name these to sources that I have. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click here. Go down to edit text. And here I can choose the color of that text. And I can also uh, choose the font of that text as well. And I'm a busy guy, so everyone wants to talk to me. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and name this first device. I'm going to go ahead and name that CD. And if I click OK, my CD appears right here. Here I'm going to go ahead and name this one Tuner. I'm going to click OK on that. Now, if it appears to be a little bit big, I can go ahead and change that by going in and edit my text. Simply go to my font here. I'm going to change my font size. Maybe we make that 18 so it fits in that button a little bit better there. And there you go. Now, I'll go ahead and I'll name one more source here. 
call it DirecTV. And once again, if that's a little bit large, I can change that. And I'm going to name the last one Cable. Now what I'm going to do is add pages for my devices. So I have a CD page. So what I'm going to do is add a CD page. The way you add a CD page is go ahead and click up here and click Pages. And I'm going to go ahead and name this CD. Go ahead and hit Enter. Now this is my home page and this is my CD page. So what do I want on my CD page? I want a way of controlling my CD. So what I'm going to do is go into my gallery. Remember I'm using the golden gallery. I'm going to go ahead and go down and think what buttons would I actually need to control the CD player. Now I have what's in my library what's called a CD transport. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. You can either double click or you can go ahead and drag that over. But what it does, you can see it populates this with the CD information that I need. Now in some cases, if I had multiple disks, I could add uh, numbers to that to, to add another page with numbers which will correspond to the actual disk that I have there. But in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and leave that uh, because I think that's good enough. Next thing I want to add is a tuner page. I'm going to go ahead and my page here, I'm going to call this page tuner. And I have to think, what do I need to operate a tuner? In this case, I probably, I'm probably going to need numbers. So I'm going to double click on that. So what I have here is the tuner. This is going to end up being my tuner down and my tuner up. I could add to this if I wanted to uh, other buttons. So say I may need an AM, FM button. I may want to add to this an AM, FM button, or I can use one of the existing numbers and make it something else. In this case, I may make this plus uh, 10 or this right here an AM, FM button if I choose to. Okay. Um, I could also add a second page if I wanted a second page of presets. What I could do, I could add a page here. What I could do is go ahead and add a preset page here. What these presets would be stations that I would choose. And what I would do that, I would find icons for those stations and just simply drag them onto there. As an example, um, I'll go ahead to here and grab some stations and just drag a couple on there just to show you what that would look like. Now, of course, to make these stations work, I would make a macro with the number of that station and just drag it onto there. But that's a way to add presets or anything else to uh, your radio stations if you chose to. Next page I'm going to go ahead and add is a cable page. And of course I'm going to need more than a cable page. I'm going to need a cable transport page as well. But first we're going to go ahead and add our cable page. We're going to go back to our golden right here. And first thing we're going to add is just a number page for our cable. And we can channel up and down and actually select our channels. But we're going to need another page for that. I'm going to go ahead and add another page and I'm going to call this Cable Nav. It's going to be a navigation page for our cable. And what that will look like, uh, we're going to need to be able to go to a, a menu and go around and uh, up, down, left, right, red, blue, yellow, green. Okay, so we now have that for our cable page as well. So the next thing we'll go ahead and we'll add a Blu-ray page and that'll be our final page. But for Blu-ray, we're probably going to need two pages as well. But for one, for now, we're just going to add one. Our Blu-ray page. What do we need for our Blu-ray page? Just a DVD transport. Okay, we'll need a second page for our cable, which will be our navigation page. This will be our nav for our Blu-ray. We're going to add to that. Kind of the same thing. We need that up, down, left, right, that cursor, that menu button. So now we have our pages. And what we need to do now is add code to those pages. The way you do that is this. So what I need to do is add my IR codes to that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over to the CD player that I chose before. I'm going to grab it from that list and drop it on an empty spot on that page. And what happens is it populates the entire page there. Now anything with a screw terminal like that means that it needs to have a code on it. I'll show you an example. Notice this one has a screw terminal. If I click on that, right here, there's no command or action for that button, meaning that this uh, CD player that I chose, it does not have that function. I could do one or two things. I can delete that button off, or I could just leave it there just for aesthetics. 
But if you look at the play button here, you can see there is an IR command for that. In the other button, you have that correct IR command. So when I hit that button, that's the function that will happen from this IR output. Okay, I'm going to continue with that. For the tuner, I'm going to go here and I'm going to grab a tuner. I'm going to grab this tuner and drop right there. Once again, the same thing happened. But you notice here, these buttons did not, and this is the important one. So these are our tuner up and our tuner down and our zero. If they do not populate here, it means that maybe they didn't learn very well over here and they weren't put in a class. But you can always drag individual commands and drop on these buttons. So now I'll have a tuner down. And now I have a tuner up command. And this one actually has a 10 plus, so it does not have a zero, and that's why the zero. So I can leave the zero there, or I can go ahead and make that a different function. I can make this an AM button or this an FM button. Uh, we can go ahead and do that, actually. We can go ahead and make this an AM button. And if we want to, we can go ahead and change the name on that. Now, of course, we'd have to change the font on that to AM. And I can change the other one to FM. Okay, so for our presets, we've already figured out how we're going to do that. I'm going to build one macro here just to show you how that would work. So in this case, if I were to build a macro, if I knew this station right here is station, I don't know, 97, what I do is this. I go down, build a macro. I call it 97. I go over to here. I grab my 9. And I grab my 7. So my tuner will switch to 9, 7. What I want to do is add a delay, though, because sometimes it doesn't always work as fast as you want it to. So go ahead and put a delay on there. So now we have a 9, 7. What I do, I go back to my preset page, take this 97, and simply drop on that button there. And that's how you would build a macro or channel 97, or any other macros that you're going to build. The cool thing is you would only have to do that once for all of the stations in your area. Next customer, you just simply drag the icons that they want on there. We'll continue to say, do the same thing for our cable. We'll grab our cable and drop that over. And do the same thing for our blue way. We'll grab the commands and just simply drop them over. The next thing that you're going to do is go ahead to the home page here. Now, what we need to do is just simply take the CD here and drop on a CD page. We'll grab the tuner. We'll drop that on the tuner page. We're going to grab the cable. We're going to drop that on the cable page. Okay? Direct TV. If we had that, somehow I got screwed up. But <laughs> Blu-ray. Well, I act like that's Direct TV. We could just drop that on the page there. Okay? The only thing you have to do is make sure these pages have a place to go. Once you're done with the page, where do you want to go? You want that to go back to home page because you don't have a second page for it. Tuner, you're going to do the same thing. I'm going to make sure these go back to home page so I can get back to home page. Okay? But Tuner, we actually want this button to go to the preset page because we have a preset page. Okay? In the preset page, we want to go back to Tuner or we want to go home. The way that looks is this. Here is a simulator. If you click on that, you can kind of test the things that you just did there. And this is how your tuner is going to go to that preset page. We're going to go back there. We're going to go home. And you can test all of your pages that way. Next thing you do, you simply upload this keypad here to the actual keypad itself. You take the mini USB that you have, plug it into the side of it. It should make that cute little noise there. Yeah, go ahead and you click on that keypad that you're working on, and you can simply upload to it. And what it does, it uploads that project to your keypad. So the next thing we need to do in our project is set up our KPD keypad. KPD keypad, when you open it, kind of looks like this. And what you see when you open it is the home page. What you have on the home page are the same thing that you have on the hard buttons on the keypad. You have your power button, your volume up, and your volume down, and your mute button. Okay, the way we're going to go ahead and set that up, there's a couple of ways to do it. 
what we're going to do though first is go to this button here called settings the way we're going to set up our keypad is we're going to have it so it automatically recognizes what's in the 800 or the 400 and we'll go ahead and populate our keypads the way we'll do that is this go ahead and hit your settings button here what we're going to do is go over here and we're going to go ahead and click the auto assign button for the zones. We're also going to click the IR receiver button on there. And what we'll do now, we'll go down to the sources here. Now, you could just type in the name of the source here if you do not want your system to emulate what's on your 800. In other words, you have different type of zones and you have different things in different zones. In our, for, in our instance here, we're going to have a whole house audio system. And we're pretty much going to share the sources. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to go down to the source here. And what we're going to do, we're going to type in this. We're going to type in the percentage sign. Put our caps on and type in the word source. And this is going to be source 1. And then we're going to put another behind that, another percentage sign. And we're going to do the same thing for our next uh, three sources as well. Now we don't have a source 5 or 6 on our system. Remember we skipped down to the digital input to source 7. So what we'll do, we just ignore these here. We're just going to go ahead and go to source 7 here. And do the same thing. Now what happens, now that we did that here, and we went ahead and we did auto assign right here for our zones. And we put in, remember, capital letters, the word source uh, flanked by the percentage sign with the zone number in there as well. When you do that, and you go back to your home page, well, we're going to go here and go ahead and assign this to a zone. And once you do that, once you go back here to your home page, what you have is this. Anytime you see the Axiom icon right here, that means that these areas are being controlled by the Axiom. That's the Axiom standby, the Axiom volume up, volume down, the Axiom mute. That could be if you had a separate receiver, you can simply drag a code in there that would replace that. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and add these sources. And since we already named them, what we need to do is this. We're going to right click here on a and then we're going to go down to add. What we're going to add is the axiom command, axiom source select, and we're going to go ahead and select this. This is source one. We're going to do the same thing over again. We're going to go down and add. This time we're going to add source two. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add sources three and four. Okay, so now what I have, I'm telling this with this symbol right here to whenever you power up, look into this 800 here. And whatever you see as the 800, go ahead and populate that on my keypad. Now, if I wanted something different, once again, I can go in here and I can name these sources anything uh, that I chose to. Now, another thing you could do with this, remember that these are the sources here. Now, in a basic configuration right now if I just left this like this and went ahead and updated uh, my system this would work fine I would be able to select the source and control the volume up and down on it but say I wanted to do more than that this is my CD player say I wanted to have some control over my CD player what I can do is this I can go ahead and I can add a page I call that page CD so what I'm going to do I'm going to go over to my CD player here and open it. Now keep in mind that this is a KPD keypad. So the way that works, it has an up down button, it has a source select button, and it has a volume up and down button. So in other words, you don't want to have to have too many functions on there because you don't want to push too many buttons to get to these functions. So I'm going to keep this very basic. I'm going to put a play button on there. I'm going to put a pause button and I'm going to put a stop button. In. That's all I'm going to put on there. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and add another page because I'm going to do the same thing for my tuner here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to name this tuner. 
All I'm naming is the page here. If this is the page. Right now that page, it's a blank page. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go ahead to my tuner. And I'm going to grab some commands from my tuner. I'm going to add some commands. I'm going to add a, a, a tuner a tuner up on that page. I'm going to add a tuner down on that page. Maybe I'll add an FM and an AM also to that tuner on that page. Once again, I don't want a bunch of commands, but I do want some control over that. Okay, so now what I do with these pages here, I just simply take them and I drop them right on these sources. Okay, then I link those commands. So when I hit this source, I can actually go to this page. Do the same thing for my tuner here. Okay, so after that, what I have now, this is ready to be uploaded to my project. And of course, the way you load that to your project, connect the keypad to my mini USB. I go over here, I highlight the keypad up top here. Remember, anytime it's bold like that, it's ready to be updated. I just go ahead and got click yes here. What that's going to do is go ahead and upload that project to my keypad. And when it does that, it's going to go ahead and load uh, all of the information that I put on here, including pages, page flips, and control. Okay, after that, I'm pretty much ready to go with my project. I've uh, uploaded my KPC, my KPD, and that's how you build a basic project using Axiom Portal software.